about to make our crossing over to the Bahamas tonight. Got the ways to go. We are in the Gulf Stream. This sucks. On the nose so that we can't sail. So I actually considered it turning us around because we would never make it. But... I just want to be there already. We have made it into the anchorage. It is beautiful. It's hot, Jeff just said. <laughs> the sun is setting and we are about to make our crossing over to the Bahamas tonight. I'm a little bit nervous, can't lie. It's only about 60 nautical miles over across to West End. And it's, it'll take us about 11, 12 hours. We're going with another boat, um, so everything should be fine, right? We've done our checks. <laughs> Just gotta do the doing part. Yeah, and then we'll get to the Bahamas and do the chilling part after that. Exactly. Woo! I'll show you the outside sunset right now. It's actually quite nice. It's only gonna get better. The colors are gonna get way better coming up here. We just got back actually from a little indigy um, ride downtown with our new friends, Sailing Hanu. I think they're out on their deck right now with a little sundowner cocktail, I'm sure. So that was pretty cool. They are a really cool couple. They also have a YouTube channel and Instagram. So Sailing Hanu time. So go and follow them if you don't already. They're really fun. Don't know if I said, but it's about 5.30 p.m. right now. We're leaving at about eight o'clock, so it will be dark by the time we go but luckily we know the way in and out of this anchorage pretty well. We filled up on water and diesel earlier this afternoon over at Sailfish Marina. I uh, threw out one bag of trash, the usual things. Jeff has been doing his checks. He went and checked the engine, the sea strainer, water strainer, um, yeah, other things. <laughs> Everything checks out, right? No. Anyway, <laughs> I think he's a little bit excited. What do you think? As I sit here with pasta above my head and bags of food above my head also, I am reminded that I never did a full show of our provisioning and where we have put it all in the boat. So it's getting dark now, but I will definitely do that once we get to the Bahamas and have some more sunlight and show you all the nooks and crannies that we stuffed ourselves full of anything that we think that we could possibly need in the Bahamas for three months. Although I'm sure we're going to run out, but we have tried our best and we'll show you that tomorrow. Before we continue, huge shout out to our amazing patrons. We are so thankful for each one of you. If you're enjoying our content and would like to join the Joko crew, we'll have a link in the description box below. Thank you. Got everything good here. And unfortunately, this guy came in later this evening and it looked like he's gonna be really close to being on top of our anchor. So we're just taking it like nice and slow. We only have 50 feet down because we were just down here for the afternoon. And then we will skedaddle. We'll bust a right. I do the driving when we are doing anchoring and Jeff is up front. Okay. 25 more feet to go, so lift up. And our distance to that other boat is okay. So hopefully it'll stay that way. Right now there is absolutely no wind here in the anchorage, um, but it should be about 10, gusting 15 or so out there, which would be good. We might be a little bit hard on the wind. Uh, we'll see once we get out there. Okay, so we're out here. You can see where we're at. That's how far we've made it. Got a ways to go. We are in the Gulf Stream. Top right corner, 4.9 knots, 4.8, 4.6, somewhere there. We're kind of hovering around there. Four stats over there, pointing 104. And the lady is here, laying down, already <laughs> feeling sick. Can't really see you though. Uh, it's a very sporty conditions right now. Yeah. yeah. So the captain has given me a nice pillow, and I'm trying to lie down and imagine I'm in the Bahamas right now and not moving, shaking everywhere. <laughs> You're on your way. On my way, yep. We'll check in with you later. Alright. A little bit of an update. The ocean gets one point. Kristen, zero seasickness points. <laughs> Boo. 
I lost my dinner. That was actually quite tasty, but now I fed it to the fishies. You're welcome. That was one of the roughest night passages we've ever had, and it didn't get better once the sun was up. We're so thankful though to have a kick-ass autopilot, it didn't even skip a beat. And I'm also very thankful for Jeff, as he was able to hold it all together while I couldn't. This sucks. Yeah, this is... Look right what the forecast showed. Uh, what did you, what'd you ask me there? It's not what the forecast no, showed. it's not at all. It's like been continuous 22, 23 on the nose so that we can't sail and um, way bigger rollers than was, was stated. And at one point we were going like 0.6 knots through the Gulf Stream. Yeah, wind against, ridiculous. Wind against us, current against us. Yeah, point, yeah, point 0.7 to 1.5. I actually considered it turning us around because we would never make it. But yeah, we ran out of fuel. <laughs> for a long time, we were averaging like two and a half knots. Now we are averaging about four. We are 21 nautical miles from Bahamas, babe. Oh, that's good. Basically, this has been my position the entire time. Lying down because if I even move or even think about moving, even if I like blink, I get sick. Oh, I just want to be there already. So, honey, I don't know about you, but when we were looking at this crossing 60 miles straight across be super easy compared I mean, to what we've done before. Yeah, I didn't see how it would be that much more challenging, but yeah. certainly when the weather doesn't cooperate in any way at all the whole time, it gets a little bit annoying. Like, look at these breakers out here right now. It's ridiculous. I have been laying in the same spot holding on for dear life. For hours. For hours. I can't move. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty gnarly out here. We're going to be happy to finally get there. And I think Jeff said that he could see some land back there. This is the only way that I can look for it because I can't move. But is there some land over there you can see? Probably not on camera, but... Yeah. We're almost there. <laughs> We're in the Bahamas. Jeff, be excited. Be excited. I'm excited. Woo! <laughs> we arrived here and um, in West End. I'm still alive, barely. Um, and we went to customs. It was very quick. Uh, they stamped our stuff, gave us our cruising permit, fishing permit, all that. 300 US dollars for three months. Um, the cost is 600 US dollars if you are getting the 12 month permit. We're taking a breather right now and. Um, yeah, a relaxer. We put up the quarantine flag when we got here, um, and now it's time to put the uh, Bahamas flag up. Um, over here, this pink building is the gift shop. That is the place that I have heard online that you can go and get one of those um, phone plan packages for a month with a live ALIV and it should be about 140 a month for unlimited data, talk, text, all of that. Um, and then it comes with a SIM card. But the guy wow, here, yeah. yeah, the guy here said that the plan was 150 and that's $30 for the SIM card. And I had read online that a lot of times these people, um, they own the SIM cards and they don't ever register it in the morning. So when you want to renew the plan, if we're going to be here three months, you try going online to log into the system and top up the account, but you can't because it's not yours. Um, it belongs to whoever sold it to you. So I don't like that, um, unfortunately, and also because he was just telling me the wrong prices. Like, clearly, if you go to the uh, website for this phone company, that's not the prices, and the SIM comes free with their packages. So something's up with him. So I guess we're not getting it here, which is a big bummer. I was really looking forward to having an unlimited data package right when we got here. So 
Oh, we just have to figure something else out. So now with customs done, we are now going to be making our way over to the Anchorage for the night. We're seeing one boat go in there right now. Hopefully it's not going to be too busy in there for us one other as well. One other. Yeah, we saw another one in there on AIS already. So, Just coming in the inlet for our Anchorage. We've got it power box. For the night. Uh, down in here, so it goes down here and then over to the right. And uh, it was a failed development in here. But now a lot of cruisers use it as an anchorage. We, ha we have made it into the anchorage. It is beautiful. So it's a pretty narrow in here, but that's okay. Another neighbor here. All right, it's sunset time. Also, get a load of this watercolor. Are you kidding me? Heck yeah, we have arrived. Good morning to us. Wow, get a load of that. It's beautiful. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> the water on this side looks so beautiful. Nice colors. It looks so beautiful. Oh wow, no, you look so beautiful to me. Oh yeah, the colors start over here. So pretty. I can remember this guy's boat name. Soaring eagles. This guy over here. Yeah. Yeah. Soaring eagles. Oh, they're checking out the sunrise too. So I figure that now is as good a time as any to go around the boat and show you where we have put all of our storage um, for our canned goods, our dried goods, um, everything that we stock the boat full of for our three month stint in the Bahamas. I will warn you, our boat is a little bit messy right now, but um, I figure if I don't go around and show you everything now, we will start consuming things and then it won't be showing the full um, amount of things that we got. So. Here we go. All right, so as I mentioned, it's pretty messy in here, um, but uh, let's get started. First thing is the obvious. There's some bags hanging from our grab rail here. <laughs> this bag here is filled with ramen. This bag here is filled with cereals. This one here is a bag of apples is down in there this one is kind of annoying because as you can see it, it does hang a little bit lower than the other ones and when we have a seat here we always smack our head on the bag of apples so there's probably going to be one or two bruised ones in there by the end of it but that's okay our first of many bags of snacks this stuff is so good if you ever get the chance grab some of this it's really tasty another bag of snacks here right here as well okay we have almond milk. We got about 12 containers of almond milk for our three months here. And this is the coffee that Jeff really likes. One of these lasts him about a month, so we got three of them. Bags here of sugar. Underneath here, we have this crate we got from Home Depot, stocked with lots of cans. Two big things of flour. Um, up here, we have a million pounds of pasta, some popcorn, saltine crackers, because if I am seasick, sometimes that's the only thing that I can try to get down. Most of the time they just come back up anyway. A bunch of jars of marinara sauce. We have some pad thai rice noodle, old fashioned rolled oats. One, two, three. I think that's all in here. We just opened a jar of peanut butter, so technically four, I guess. Jars of peanut butter. Tacos, one, two, three, four, it looks like. We have some sushi rice, we have two of these. These are different type of rices. So we have a jambalaya, dirty rice, and there is yellow rice. This is some paella packs by the brand Vigo, Vigo. It's really good. These cans have a bunch of seafood in them and then it comes with yellow rice. And so we just like cut out the instructions from the side of the box, put it in the Ziploc, and then we know how to cook it. Very easy. Next up is the other side of the boat here. This is now our canned meat <laughs> cupboard. So we have a lot of tuna. Um, this is pretty deep in here. Pulled pork in a can from Walmart. Have you ever tried this? I got three of them, hoping that they're good. 
in this cupboard is what we call Kristen's grocery store. Why? Because any condiment or sauce or anything that you could possibly want is in here. <laughs> Extra ketchup, chili garlic sauce, Nutella, mayo, two of these. We got this uh, Southwest hot mustard. This stuff is so good, guys. It's a little bit sweet, um, spicy for sure. It's really good on sandwiches or basically anything. Um, queso containers there, oyster sauce. We have pickles. We have Thai sweet chili sauce. In the back of the galley, this area is filled even where it's hard to open it. We have a lot of cans up here. Uh, we have some sushi nori extra tomatoes. They would have fallen if I kept them up there during our passage. Refried beans, butter beans, green beans, chickpeas, kidney beans, black beans, pinto beans. Next up is below the starboard settee. We have a lot down here as well. <laughs> we have potatoes here, and here is more potatoes and some sweet potatoes. And all of these, it goes all the way up. I can show you, yes. And these are all two, sometimes three high of items. Olives, coconut milk, diced tomatoes, lentils. Here is more, I don't even know what it is. Oh, onions, I believe. Red onions, yellow onions, and garlic is in there. There's some more salmon and tuna here. Carrots, baby corn, mandarin oranges, so many items. Okay, we're almost done here. All right, let's go to the aft cabin and show you the rest. Over here is another of our drink cupboards to pack juices, ginger ale, LaCroix, tonic, Dr. Pepper. Oh, thank oh God. <laughs> okay, hold on. Wah! And over in the side cabinet, we got peanuts and we got more beer. <laughs> So these go three deep back there. We're tonic, we have some scotch in the back and just some more beers. And oh, some graham crackers up here as well. We made it to our first Bahamas beach. As you can tell, we are beyond excited to have finally made it to the tropics. It's been a long few years to get to this point. A lot of ups and downs, backs and forths, but we are stoked our dream is actually happening. We can't wait to share the Bahamas and beyond with you. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.